moving forward a little bit, it looks like in 1967, you released your first album, In the Garden, a gospel project with your sisters and your mom. Talk about going into the studio and cutting that album. Well, it was actually a lady had seen my mother and my sister Cassie and me uh, singing at a funeral. And she was so touched by the harmony that we did, that mountain harmony that we did, that she offered to finance a gospel album because she knew my mother was very uh, religious and that my granddad was a minister. And so that's how we ended up going in the studio here in Nashville and cutting that album. Okay. And around that time, it looked like in your bio, you moved to Washington, D.C. It was uh, right after my son was born. Actually, I think I was pregnant with my son when we did the album. Um, and uh, not long after he was born, I had an opportunity to move to Washington, D.C. in the Alexandria areas where I we to, lived. I used to live there. Okay. Yeah. And I worked, I took a job working two different clubs there for a man who had, uh, he had been a sergeant uh, in the army there at Fort Belvoir. And I think he, what do you call it? Mustered out there. Yep. And yep. so he, he had a he had a couple of um, used car lots and he had a pizza hut or a pizza. He called, it was called a pizza King and he had go-go dancers and rock and roll music there down the road, about seven miles. He had a place called Hillbilly heaven and that's where I worked. But then I would j jump in the car and he would drive me up to the, to the pizza King and the girls would get down out of the go-go uh, cages. And then I would do a set of uh, rock and roll or, country music, whatever he wanted me to do for the Fort Belvoir soldiers that mm -hmm. were there. So that's kind of how I started. And he became my first manager. Ironically, he later became Dan Aykroyd's father-in-law. Huh. And, and he was, he's Donna, he was Donna Dixon's uh, yep, Donna father. Mm -hmm. And so, and she used to babysit my son because I lived with them for a while after we had moved there. And so I go back that far with them. And it was my first professional, you know, gig. And I stayed there and worked for them. Uh, and um, it was a great opportunity for me to kind of, you know, figure out if I wanted to do that or not. So that's where I started. Okay. How much was it a shock coming from Tennessee moving to uh, that area was it a shock at all or no it was a shock because i came out of the church and a, a little cinder block church on the gravel road that my granddad pastored and i had you know i knew people drank beer and people my dad would come home smelling like beer sometimes but i'd never been around anybody that drank or anything like that and it was a big shock for me to transition into the world, as it were. And I was stunned by a lot of the things I saw, but um, I felt like that I could take my faith and my own uh, set of standards of my upbringing to the people that I worked around. And I did do that all I could and continued to do that throughout my life. Not because I'm this great saint or this great Christian because I can swear like a sailor and I can pray like a saint. And I've always been that way. And I think that's the only way to be and to be comfortable in your own skin, regardless I, of what color your skin is, just be real, you know, I just agree. be honest. Absolutely agree. Okay. <clears throat> it looks like at some point you moved back to Nashville and started your own record label, Soul Country in Blues, and released your first solo album, I Want to Hold You in My Dreams. Is that correct? That is correct. And I was actually forced to start my own record label because I couldn't get a record deal here in Nashville because I was Dolly's kid sister and no one wanted to give me the time of day. And so I ended up having to start my own record label and Soul Country and Blues, if you abbreviate it, it's, it's uh, spells scab, which is means uh, non-union session. So I've always kind of had a sarcastic uh, uh, 
you know, slant on everything because, you know, there, where there's a will, there's a way. And so ironically, I ended up having my first hit record on my own record label when I was 24 years old, when nobody in this town would, you know, you know, hardly, they laughed me out of their office basically. And I went ahead and uh, put the record out on my own label and it, you know, went to the top of the billboard charts and, and then the next year I was able to sign with a major label mm -hmm. and um, a lot of things I've noticed over the years, you know, I've, over the last couple of years, people don't talk about all the stuff that, that I've had to do. It's almost like they're surprised that I ever did anything at all. Uh, but you know, you have to take whatever opportunity comes your way. And so that's what I always tell the kids that, that I've worked with over the years that I've tried to, you know, help and develop into artists. Uh, don't uh, be particular about the jobs you take, just take the job because regardless of how much money you're making or how much uh, prestige you think you're going to get out of it, you're going to get some experience and you never know who's going to be sitting there in the audience that might see you, that might be the door that you've been looking to knock on. I absolutely agree with you. I tell, I tell people that all the time, never, never take a, an opportunity for granted. And exactly. You, you mentioned it led to you signing a major label deal with Electra Records. And it looks like in about 1976. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was a year after, in 1975 was when I had my uh, mm -hmm. hit album and hit record on my own label, on Scab Records, and then I signed with Elektra, and I think I had 11 uh, uh, top 20 billboard hits on Elektra before my contract ran out, after I, had, I was contracted to do three albums and a best of album, or a uh, you know, hits collection, which was four albums for them. And they didn't resign me because they had a change over in the, you know, personnel at the label. And I was unfortunately not resigned, which was devastating to me. So I ended up shopping and having to look for other labels for years. Finally, I gave up, you know, I did a few, uh, you know, projects for, fly by night record labels, independent labels that were more trouble than they were worth, basically. And then I eventually just started doing my own projects. And so far, I've had, uh, other than those seven albums, uh, I've uh, produced and released 40 albums so mm -hmm. far. So I've been working my butt off, so, oh, we, you sure have, so to speak. You sure have, because like I said, doing research on it is a lot.